Did you know that building codes require that wood products go through a series of torture tests for approval? Well, today we're at the APA Engineered Wood Association in Tacoma, Washington, and we're going to show you how tough some of these tests can be. They pull them apart, bend them to the breaking point, and put them under an excruciating amount of pressure. The purpose of all this destruction is to ensure that the engineered wood products in your new house are safe, dependable, and durable. Technicians at the APA Engineered Wood Association are going to see how far this plywood panel will bend before it breaks. This odd looking device will measure the panel's flexibility. Well, Chris, we have a deflection gauge on here. What do you hope to learn from this test? Steve, this test is going to determine the stiffness and strength capacity of the panel. The deflection gauge is going to measure how much the panel moves uh, after we've started the yokes and movement to apply a force to the front of the panel. Uh, after we've developed a certain amount of deflection, we can calculate the stiffness of the panel. We'll then take the panel to failure and determine the strength capacity of the panel. Now that really helps us in a home because, you know, if we have a springy floor, that's somewhat due to the thickness of the plywood they use and its stiffness, right? Sure. Or a um, new construction where you've got a carpenter walking around on a new roof system. You want to make sure that that panel is going to hold up in the way of stiffness right. and strength. Well, let's see how it works. A computer keeps track of the plywood's stiffness by calculating how much it will flex under a certain amount of pressure. The deflection gauge is then removed and the pressure is increased to see how much stress the panel can withstand before it breaks. Well, it sure is a noisy test. It looks like this broke all the way through. How thick is this panel? It's a half inch four ply panel. And uh, how many pounds of pressure did it take to break this? 9,000 pounds of force. So what did you learn? Well, one thing we learned that the panel meets the requirements. Uh, we'll now be able to use the data that we gained from this to determine what, how the panel is going to perform under a wind load or a snow load. And that way, if the manufacturer ever wants to change his formula or his manufacturing processes, you have a way to really uh, you know, help determine whether it's better or worse. Absolutely. We can develop a baseline from these panels. For future testing. Right. Great idea. This next test will determine how much abuse a roofing panel can take from a carpenter with a heavy foot and a bag of nails he just can't seem to hold on to. Well, Chris, I've walked a lot of roofs. Some have been more bouncy than others. I've often wondered whether or not I was going to go through. I guess this test helps us determine that? This test machine can be adjusted for different spans. This particular product is span rated for 24 inches for a roof system. So in this particular case, we're going to measure the amount of deflection on the panel that would be caused by a, an average 200 pound carpenter. We've got a three inch disc. This is uh, approximately the size of a, a person, the, the heel of someone's shoe or boot. That's placed in the weakest portion of the panel, mid span, two and a half inches in. Right close to the seam here. Right. And we're going to apply a load. Uh, and that load, when it gets, hits 200 pounds, we're going to take a deflection rating on the panel to see how much the panel has moved. Let's do it. At 200 pounds of pressure, this panel deflected 3 eighths of an inch. The maximum allowed is 1 half inch, so the panel passed this test. The deflection meter is removed and the pressure is greatly increased. At 604 pounds, the plywood panel starts to fail. But since it's designed to handle only 400 pounds, it easily passes this test as well. The nail bag test simulates the damage that can occur when a 30 pound bag and a 60 pound bag are dropped onto the panel numerous times. Well, Chris, it looks like it passed the test. What we've done, Steve, is dropped uh, this bag of shot that simulates a bag of nails uh, from five different levels. We're now going to move the bag out of the way, put the three inch disc back on the panel again, and proof load the panel to 300 pounds. This next test will jar you right out of your seat. It's called a finger joint tension test. And when this board snaps, everyone in the room jumps. So Chris, what information did you learn from this test? We've learned that the finger joint was just as strong as the wood itself. We've applied a tension force to the finger joint, pulled it apart, and it, was, it broke at approximately 7,000 PSI. We now look at the finger joint and the gluing surface area and see how much wood failure there is in that area. The higher the wood failure, the better the glue bond. Well, it looks to me like this uh, performed as well as the wood would have done itself. Yes, sample meets requirements. Pushing these products past the limit in the laboratory ensures that they can handle more than the limit when they're used to build your new house. 